Yes, well, we're so glad you guys came to be with us tonight. We'll go ahead and get started. Tonight, our program is actually called Bunny Tales. And Meow Meow says, yay! Can everybody give me their, th- their hands up in excitement about Bunny Tales? Woo! Yay! Well, we are excited to have everybody with us for the South Charleston Public Library's program tonight. And we are going to be monitoring the room and cameras and microphones and all those kind of things. So Miss Olivia takes care of our rooms. We're going to introduce ourselves real quick so you know who we all are. I'm Miss Denise. This is Meow Meow. She doesn't really need an introduction. Everybody knows Meow Meow. Hi, everyone. I'm Miss Annette. Hi, I'm Miss Toby. And I'm Miss Olivia. Yay! So we are so happy to be with all of you tonight. So what we're going to do is we're going to get started with our story time song. So is everybody ready? Here we go. If if you're ready for a story, come sit down. If you're ready for a story, come sit down. Let's all gather near so everyone can hear. If you're ready for a story, come sit down. Yay! Yay! (laughs) So we are so glad to have you with us. We're talking about bunnies today because this coming weekend on Sunday is Easter Sunday. And we're going to talk with you a little bit about bunny rabbits and bunnies in general. Have any of you ever had a rabbit for a pet? Has anybody ever had a rabbit for a pet? I've never had a rabbit for a pet. Oh, Toby has. Look at that. Have you had a rabbit for a pet? That's wonderful. Okay. (laughs) So several people have. Sometimes it used to be on Easter holidays that families would get baby rabbits and baby chicks as Easter presents. I don't know that people really do that so much anymore because that's more than just a short-term gift. You have to raise it. Then you got to raise a chicken and a rabbit and they take a lot of work. So that's something you really got to think about before you bring home a rabbit to keep for a pet. So we have several really fun stories for you tonight. The first book we have, I think Miss Toby's going to read for us. Yeah, we have um, Hoppy's uh, Hooray for Hoppy. And uh, we have a recording of the book here so let me share oh let me find the right screen to share with you let me share my screen your screen all right and apologize that the camera on our books this week was a little shaky uh, but you'll you should still be able to see the pictures while i read along okay all right hit play All right, so this is Hooray for Hoppy. It's a first book about the five senses. It's by uh, Tim Hopgood. And it is from uh, Farrar Strauss and Giro, New York. And there you see the bunny in his like little burrow because that's where bunnies hang out in the winter. All right. Hoppy woke up bright and early. He wiggled his nose and sniffed the air. Perhaps today is the day, he thought. But as he hopped on the top of his hole, he saw the world was covered in snow. Too cold, he said, and he hopped back to bed. The next morning, when Hoppy hopped to the top of his hole, his nose felt cold and the grass felt crunchy. Too icy, he said, and he went back to bed. Oh, I didn't. Sometimes when you're expecting spring and it's cold, it's no fun. A few days later, Hoppy woke up much earlier than usual. Perhaps today is the day, he thought. Hoppy twitched his nose. The air smelled fresh. Perhaps today really is the day, the day that spring arrives. So Hoppy hopped down the hill to see if it was true. Oh, do you see the flowers in the trees? I think think it might be. Hooray, said Hoppy as he heard the birds singing. It sounds like spring has sprung. What other sounds do you hear in spring? Hooray, said Hoppy as he sniffed the pretty flowers. It smells like spring has sprung. Oh. Hooray, said Hoppy as he watched the lambs in the meadow. It looks like spring has sprung. Look at those lambs with their curly wool. 
Hooray, said Hoppy as he nibbled the fresh green grass. It tastes like spring has sprung. Hip hip hooray, said Hoppy as his feet touched the warm ground. It even feels like spring has sprung. You see the sun there in the sky. There's no snow. All right. Today really, oops. Mm -hmm. Today really is the day, thought Hoppy. He couldn't wait to see his friends. But when he reached the top of the hill, what do you think's going to happen? Mm. Nobody was there. So he thumped his back feet as hard and as loud as he possibly could. That's a lot of bunnies. <laughs> mm, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Hooray, shouted all the rabbits as Hoppy leaped high into the air. Spring had definitely and most wonderfully sprung. <laughs> all right, so our last page here is um, there are five senses that we use to discover the world. The first is hearing, listening with your ears. What can you hear? Well, right now I can hear maybe some bees buzzing outside. That's the so sound of spring, right? What other spring sounds do we hear sometimes? I think Hoppy heard, what's that in the picture? Birds or birds? And our other senses, our second sense is smell. You smell with your noses. We smell flowers and fresh cut grass. And I think those are most of the spring smells. What does Hoppy smell? I think he smelled the flowers. Sight is what you can see with your eyes, like fresh flowers blooming or little green plants coming up in the garden. What does Hoppy see? He saw the lambs, right? And then taste, we taste with our tongues. What can you taste? I'm trying to think of some, some spring taste. I can't think of any because I'm not a rabbit and I don't eat fresh grass, but Hoppy tasted the fresh grass outside. And touch, we feel with our hands and feet. What can you feel? I feel like we feel warm um, sunshine and like the soft fur on pets and what and Hoppy also felt the warm sunshine. So that is hooray for Hoppy, our first Miss, book for this evening. Miss mm -hmm. Toby, I came up with a spring taste in you late did. spring. Everybody starts thinking about strawberries. Oh, that's true. Mm. Yes, yeah, that's a spring taste. Favorite. Definitely. Oh, so Meow Meow wanted to make sure everybody got a chance to see how ready she is for Easter. Can you see her little head, headband? She's got her flowers on. And then look at this shirt. She's got a sparkly, shiny bunny with a cottontail. And she has her little skirt that matches her bunny. And look at these shoes. I would love to have a pair of these shoes myself. And they've got the little Build-A-Bear on the bottom. <laughs> Look at how cute, and even her shoes have tails. Look at the tails on her shoes. Is that not cute? She is totally ready for Easter. Is everybody else ready for Easter? Yes, the bunny, 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 bunnies. So why is the Easter bunny associated with Easter? There's a lot of the modern day stories of the Easter rabbit. An Easter bunny, R bunny and rabbit are the same thing. Bunny and rabbit started in the 1800s. In the spring, rabbits give birth to their litter of babies and they're called kittens, which is kind of funny, but there are, they are called kittens when babies are, or when rabbits are babies. And the rabbit became a symbol of new life when things start to grow and bloom and come back to life in the spring. So legend says that the Easter bunny lays, decorates, and hides eggs to celebrate the symbol of new life with humans. So that's pretty cool, huh? 
So that's the story of like Easter bunnies. So, and did you know they even make songs about Easter bunnies? Oh my gracious, who knew? <laughs> so next up, we have a very fun song about a bunny named Peter Cottontail. Yes. So Let Toby's me... going to sing a song for us. I'm going to sing along for, for you guys. I'm also going to share the lyrics with you because I feel like not everyone knows this one and it might make it easier for you to sing along. Um, so this is uh, Here Comes Peter Cottontail. We have a slightly abridged ver version. It's usually a very long song. Abridged means when you make something shorter than it is naturally, usually a book or a poem. So um, here comes Peter Cottontail hopping down the bunny trail. Hippity hoppity Easter's on its way. Bringing every girl and boy baskets full of Easter joy, things to make your Easter bright and gay. Here comes Peter Cottontail hopping down the bunny trail, hippity hopping Easter's on its way. Try to do the things you should, maybe if you're extra good, he'll roll lots of Easter eggs your way. Oh, here comes Peter Cottontail, hopping down the bunny trail, hippity hoppy happy Easter day. Yay! Hey. Wonderful! <laughs> Thank you, Toby. That was a fun, fun song about <laughs> Easter rap. So, here we come. We're almost ready for our next story. Mm -hmm. And Miss Annette's going to read us the next fun book. You ready, Miss Annette? Yes, yes, I am. Give me just a second. Let me get it up here to share with you guys. Um, oh, my goodness. I keep losing my share screen button. Here we go. Share. All right. Wait, okay. Me... This is called. Ch Sorry. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this one is called Chester's Colorful Easter Eggs, and it's written by Teresa Smith is the way we pronounce it here in the United States, but the Y becomes Smythe in the old vernacular and when it was our ancestors. So it's by Teresa Smythe and it is by Henry Holt and Company, New York. On the day before Easter, Chester was excited to decorate eggs for the holiday. He boiled six eggs on the stove, fixed himself a little snack, and put on his favorite music. If you look there, he has a carrot sandwich and carrot juice. Must be his favorite. Then he sat down with his crayons, tape, and an egg coloring kit. First, Chester colored an egg red and hid it in a nest full of baby birds outside Sydney's balcony. And look how he did that with the, made a bird out of that one. Then Chester colored an egg green and he hid it in one of Miss Kitty's flower pots. You see where his hand is? Then Chester colored an egg yellow and wrote Happy Easter on it and hid it under Ralph's hat while he was napping. See Chester's hands over there? Then Chester colored an egg orange and hid it inside Charlotte's sugar bowl where they had two. There you go. <laughs> what? And Sorry, it went a little fast. <laughs> Charlotte's sugar bowl when they had tea. Then Chester colored an egg purple and hid it behind Maurice's curtain during his piano lesson. It matches his curtains perfectly. <laughs> And last, Chester colored an egg blue and hid it in Frederick's water fountain on the rooftop just as it started to rain. Mm -hmm. 
On Easter morning, the sun began poking through the clouds and Chester's friends found all the eggs. Look how happy they are. Suddenly, a magic glow appeared on the eggs, just like that rainbow we talked about last week. Chester was tickled pink. Under the rainbow, his eggs looked so colorful. It was truly a wonderful Easter to, to share with all of his friends. Happy Easter, everyone. <laughs> That's such a fun, fun story. Thank you, Miss Annette. Next up, we have some really silly jokes about bunnies and Easter and silly things. So Miss Olivia is going to read the jokes. And then I'm going to tell you the answer. So get ready to laugh. These are pretty good. All right. Can you guys hear me all right? Mm -hmm. Yep. All righty. Yep. What do you call a rabbit that tells good jokes? A funny bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Where does the Easter bunny get his eggs? At an eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> what? At an eggplant. <laughs> Where does the Easter Bunny uh, eat breakfast? I hop. <laughs> How does the Easter Bunny keep his fur neat? With a hairbrush. Oh my goodness. How does the Easter Bunny dry his fur? With a hair dryer. <laughs> What kind of beans grow in the Easter Bunny's garden? Well, jelly beans, of course. <laughs> what do you call the Easter Bunny the Monday after Easter? Exhausted. Yes. <laughs> Those are some pretty seriously good jokes there. I love it. So I'm going to be reading you the next story. And it is called Bunny Loves to Read. And this is a book written by Peter Bentley. And it's illustrated by Deborah Melman mm -hmm. and published by Paragon. So are we ready for our next story? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. All right. Bunny Loves to Read. Oh, it's not playing. Hold on. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> He's holding on to that book really tightly. Mm -hmm. He's hugging it. He loves books. Okay. Buster Bunny loved books. He read stories of princes and pirates and witches and wizards. He read books about trains and dinosaurs you read so many books, your head will explode. Oh, that's a lot of books, isn't it? Oh, my gracious. One day, oh, Buster's friends came over. Hi, Buster, they said. Are you coming out to play? Sure, said Buster with a smile. When I finish my book, it's all about pirates. You've always got your nose in a book, said his sister, Bella. Hopscotch is so much more fun. Oh, gracious. Books are boring, croaked Francine. Why read books when you can play leapfrog? Look at her up there. Reading is not as much fun as racing with each other, agreed Max. See him down there racing? <laughs> Don't listen to them, Buster, said Sam. I think books are the best. Really, said Buster? Yes, said Sam, smiling. Books are the best. Uh-oh, wonder what's going to happen. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> oh, it skipped a page. It, it went back. <laughs> There we go, there we go. Yeah. For nibbling. Hey, laughed Buster. Nibble, nibble. Then Bella said, come on, let's leave Buster with his dumb old books and play outside. Oh, my goodness. They're going on to play without him. But it was raining. 
The friends looked out the window gloomily. Why don't you read some of my books? Asked Buster, bringing out a big box. We don't want to look at books, said Sam grumpily. We're only waiting for the rain to stop. They just don't know what they're missing. Oh, my gracious. Even the frog doesn't like the water. Look at him. <laughs> Buster took a book out of the box. There's a big thunderstorm in this story, said Buster. It's all about pirates hunting for buried treasure. Buried treasure, asked Sam. I like nuts and acorns. Yum. Not exactly, replied Buster, but it's very exciting. Take a look. I guess uh, there's nothing better to do, sighed Sam. So there he is. He's already imagining himself as a pirate. Frogs hate being stuck inside, grumbled Francine. This book is about a prince who turns into a frog, Buster said. Good for him, said Francine. <laughs> Does he turn back into a prince? Why don't you read it and find out, said Buster. Being cooped up inside is making me sleepy, said Max. Buster gave Max a book. The princess in this story goes to sleep for 100 years, he said. Really? Wow. How does she wake up? Read it and see, said Buster. Well, okay, but I, I might fall asleep before I finish it. Does that ever happen to you? You get tired of reading and you get creepy and fall asleep? Yeah. <sighs> I'm bored. I'm going to go get a cookie, said Bella. Hey, Buster, your box is in my way. Can't you just step over it? Only if I take a giant step, said Bella. Just like a dinosaur, said Buster. Some of them were bigger than a house. Look how big that dinosaur is in the picture. <laughs> she's imagining that she's a dinosaur, isn't she? Mm -hmm. Buster looked out the window. Hey, it stopped raining, he cried. Who's coming out to play? Shh, I'm still reading. The pirates haven't found the treasure yet. And the prince is still a frog. And the brave knight is still searching for that sleeping princess. And I've just gotten to a good part about Tyrannosaurus Rex. Look at them, all involved in their books. That looks like us hanging out at the library, doesn't it? Oh, my goodness. So, so what do you want to do then, said Buster, when the friends had all finished reading? Hopscotch, leapfrog, tag? Let's pretend we do magic spells. If you give me a kiss, I'll turn into a princess, said Francine. Uh, no thanks, said Sam. Let's play pirates. Look out, said Bella. I'm a Tyrannosaurus. Roar! Look at her being her very best dinosaur. Mm -hmm. I'm off to find the enchanted princess, cried Max. Oh my goodness, look at all the ideas their stories gave them. I like they the played frog's face. <laughs> huh? I like the frog's face best. <laughs> I know. She's funny, isn't she? Yes. There we go. Very, very funny. <laughs> so they played pirates and dinosaurs and prince as princesses until it was time to go home. You can see it's the day starting to end. Do you have any other books about dinosaurs? Asked Bella. Sure, said Buster. What about frogs? Said Francine. Yes, said Buster. And toads, too. Anything else about witches and magic? Asked Max. Loads, Buster said. Oh, my gracious. <laughs> Can I borrow another pirate story? Sam asked. Of course you can, laughed Buster, as long as you promise not to eat it. Remember earlier he was trying to nibble <laughs> on those books. Got to watch him. <gasps> oh, my goodness. What a fun story. So that was our story of Bunny Loves to Read. What a fun, fun story. So now Miss Annette is going to show you what our weekly crafts are. So Miss Annette, you want to show us what we have in the craft kits this week? Well, we used your hands and the craft kit is available for you in our drive up or if you want to come in. But we traced our hands so that we could make placemats or place cards if you're going to have any 
everybody that's joining you for a special Easter dinner, you can make one of these. And so we gave you different color of paper so you could do that. And you're gonna draw in the face that you want to in the ears like this. And you're gonna bend back the one finger so that it can separate the ears. And then you're gonna fold down the thumb and the little finger to make his arms. And then you can write the name across here so that everybody knows where to sit at your table. Mm -hmm. So this is the fun craft and it's simple and you can make as many as you want to for the people that you're gonna share your Easter table with. So yes. happy Easter. <laughs> yes, what a fun, fun craft to do. So we want to let everybody know that we're getting close to the end of our spring programs. Next week is our last program on Tuesday um, at 530. And we're going to be doing National Library Week. So we have some very big surprises. Yoda is going to be joining us for books that can take you anywhere. Now, does that sound fun? I think it's going to be a really fun time. So we're really excited that that will be our um next program and then after that we start the huge countdown for summer library programs we are going to have so much fun this summer we've been working hard all since before christmas we started getting everything together and ready and boy do we have some things in store to surprise everybody this year so may the 14th you're going to want to right on your calendar may the 14th is when sign up start for summer reading so get ready for some fun so as we know we're going to finish out with our goodbye song so here we go the more we read together 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 the more we read together the happier we'll be for your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we read together, the happier we'll be. It always makes us happy when we get to read with all of you. <laughs> so thank you for coming and joining us tonight. We're going to have everybody take your microphones off so we can chat with you for a few minutes and want to just end tonight with what we always do at the end of our programs because we love reading at south charleston public library so let's get ready to do the library cheer you know we count to three and then it's the library as loud as you can is everybody ready okay yeah. here we go one one two, one. two three two. <laughs> Three. 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 Yay. Well, how much fun we've had tonight with all of you. It's been so good to see you. We thank you for coming to join us. Next week at 530, we're going to be doing oh, Books Can Take You Anywhere for Library Week. Does that sound fun? Okay, 